Eve admits that God said, if you eat, you die. There are people today who admit, I know the seventh day is a Sabbath, but I can't keep it now, it's not convenient. Just like Eve, she admitted, I know, I heard God say, if I eat, I die. I know that, says Eve. And there are people today, I know I shouldn't drink, but I drink. I know I shouldn't smoke, but I smoke. I know I shouldn't whatever, and I do it. And the serpent said unto the woman, verse 4, You shall not surely die. For God doth know, verse 5, That in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. The devil always beautifies sin to make it attractive. Now God said, if you disobey me, you die. The devil argues, if you disobey, you live. You'll be like God, and God doesn't die. So if you disobey, you live. Are you following me? Ah, let me say it again. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6, 16, Who alone hath immortality. God alone hath immortality. God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and God the Father. Immortality in God means he cannot die. The devil says you'll be like God. You can't die. The devil argues disobedience is the secret of life. God says disobedience is the gateway to death. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, which it was not. Let me tell you something. If you discuss something long enough that you shouldn't do, and you listen to someone who's trying to get you to do it, if you listen long enough, you will end up doing it. There's a time to discuss, and there's a time to run. If a man comes to you to tell you why you should leave your husband, if you start to argue why you should stay, you're in trouble. Is anyone listening to the preacher? You're in trouble. If Eve had run, when that serpent spoke, we would not be in this problem today. Yes, there's a time to speak, but there's a time to run. The carnal nature cannot compete with Satan. If you know something is wrong, do not discuss with anyone who desires to get you to do it. You may end up seeing the value in doing it. The Bible says when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. If you've got a girlfriend or boyfriend, you're serious. You want to get married. And he starts to discuss, let's live together to see if it works. I heard a guilty laughter. You need to say, wait a minute, <laughs> excuse me, I'll be back, and come back with another husband. Can you say amen? amen. <laughs> huh? Don't get into the discussion, let's live together to see if it works. You're discussing sin, and if you discuss sin long enough, it ceases to look like sin. The Bible says when the woman saw, now she saw after the discussion with the devil, that the tree was good for food, which it was not. And that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Now the tragic part. Eve's sin was a tragedy. Adam's sin was a global catastrophe. What do I mean by that? Listen to Romans 5 verse 12. Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world. Sin did not affect the world when Eve sinned. It affected the world when Adam sinned. That's a Bible teaching. Therefore, as by the disobedience of one, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one. Who is the one that disobeyed? Adam. Let me say it again with respect. Eve's sin affected her only. Adam's sin affected the entire creation because it was first put under his supervision. That's why Christ is called the second Adam because he has brought salvation for all of creation, for those who accept it. Christ is not called the second Eve. With all respects for the ladies who are listening, and who may not be happy with me, but if you're unhappy with me, you have to be unhappy with the Bible. Let me say it again. 
she took of the fruit genesis 3 verse 6 and did eat here comes the global catastrophe and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat now we must not believe she just walked up to adam and said here listen to what god says in genesis 3 verse 17 and let's use our minds and unto adam he said because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. What is God saying? Eve must have appealed to Adam. When God says thou hearkened unto the voice, he's not referring to the vocal apparatus. He is not referring to the decibels of a raised voice. He's referring to the arguments and the appeal she must have made to get her husband to sin. Thinking she was getting him to do what? What is good for him and for her. There are family members who think they're doing right by discouraging their family members from obeying God when they are endangering their eternal salvation. Is anyone listening to me? There's a reason why the Bible tells us still in the Garden of Eden before Adam and Eve were thrown out, sin entered the world when a man put a family member ahead of God. Listen to God, not to me. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. The closest person to a man after God is his wife. And the closest person to a woman after God is her husband. And God is saying you should not have put the closest person on earth to you above the closest person in the universe to you, which is me. Adam made a mistake. And those of us who are descendants of Adam, we routinely make the same mistake by putting the family ahead of God. Now who made the family? God. But who's the true head of a family? God. Of a Christian family. God. What does the first commandment say? Thou shall have no other gods before me. Now a God is that power that tells you what to do and you do it so when God told Moses I will make you a God to Aaron that was because Moses would tell Aaron what to do and what to say so Moses was serving as a God to Aaron let me say again your God is that power or that thing or that person that exerts a controlling authority over your life your God isn't a person you say you love Everybody loves Jesus. They don't do what he says. And so Adam put Eve in the place of God. What was our scripture reading? This is a difficult sermon, I know. Matthew 10, 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me when my mother heard about the sabbath many many years ago my father was sailing i told you the story in 2011 but we have new attendees here tonight let me tell it again she could not send a text we were living in the old age back then no uh, ipad no whatsapp no instagram no whatever and my father was sailing to seas. he'd be gone for years one occasion i was eight when he left he came back when i was 21 so she had a decision to make. She took us into a Seventh-day Adventist church to observe the Seventh-day Sabbath. My father got so angry he never came back home to live. But she realized, my mother, she could not wait on my father's permission to obey God. No human being must give you permission to obey God. You obey God when the Spirit of God speaks to your heart. Will somebody say amen? amen. Do not ask people for permission to obey God. We're coming to a time in this earth's history when there will be a movement legally backed for people to worship a certain way. And that way will be contrary to God's plain word. And people will have to make decisions. If you do not now practice the art of putting God above everyone and everything in that time of trouble, you will crack. Adam's big mistakes. Mistake number one. Adam put someone ahead of God and that someone was a family member. I was talking to my good brother Njeru. Praise God for him. I'm with him every day. We have sweet fellowship. I'm always rushing him. <laughs> but we have good fellowship. And we were observing today. And I have seen it 
Some of you might have seen it. Here's a person, and it happened to him, decides to observe the Sabbath. And the family disowns that person. You are no longer a member of this family. Go out. We're not talking to you. We're not supporting you. We cut you off from the will. You cannot keep the Sabbath. We are Baptists. We are Pentecostals. We are Lutherans. We are whatever. Now, if the young man says, you know, I want to drink. The family says, oh, son, you shouldn't drink, but we'll never cut you off. If the young man becomes a drug addict, the family says, we have to support him. He's one of us. He's our blood. We can't deny him. Yes, he's an addict, but we have to take care of him. If he decides to be an adulterer or a whore or whatever, oh, we can't deny him. He's one of us. He's made a mistake. Pray for him. If he decides to keep the Sabbath, cut him off. There is a hatred for obedience. But for sin, he gets all the support he needs. He's drunk, we love him. He's a drug addict, we love him. He robs people down Nairobi, he will love him. He has decided to keep the Sabbath, cut him off. Now let's pray. Cut him off, let's pray. We're Baptists, Pentecostals, Methodists, Presbyterians, we're whatever. My brothers and sisters, Adam put a family member ahead of God. That is why you and I have iron bars on our doors. That's why we lock the doors to our cars. That's why we have security to open the gate and close it because of sin. A man on whom God was counting to stand up right for what's right and true. He cracked, his knees buckled, and he put a family member ahead of God. If you were doing that, ask God for the courage to be like Jesus. Listen to Jesus speaking to his family in Luke 2, 48 to 50. Luke 2, 48 to 50. Keep in mind, these words were spoken with deep respect. Jesus had been lost for three days. He wasn't lost, the family lost track of him. Let me say that again. He wasn't lost. How could God be lost? Can you, are you with me? The family lost track of him. God doesn't really leave us, we leave him. And he respects our decision. Verse 48, Luke chapter two. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, son, listen to her words. Why hast thou thus dealt with us? What are you doing to us? Why are you embarrassing the family? Why hast thou thus dealt with us. Why are you embarrassing a Baptist family by accepting the Bible Sabbath? What are you doing to us? How can we show our faces at the Harambe? Or the uh, cookout? Or whatever? We can't show ourselves publicly. We are embarrassed because of your behavior. And Jesus says, the mother says, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. <laughs> now Jesus is doing the work of his father and his parents are crying. There are people who decide to be obey God and family members start to grieve. He has lost his mind. She has lost her mind. Let's pray that he or she stops obeying God. Are we Christians? Oh yes. But we put family ahead of God and Jesus said unto them he said unto them verse 49 how is it that ye sought me wist ye not that I must be about my father's business now I want you to picture this here is the father of Jesus standing right there and Jesus with all possible respect in his voice he looks at his father his earthly father Joseph and he says father why are you troubled do you not expect me to be about my father's business? <laughs> ah, my brothers and sisters, God never calls us to do what's easy. He calls us to do what's what? Right. And that's one of the reasons why so many people say, I love you, but they don't obey God. They serve God based on, con it is not convenient. To keep this commandment or that i'm a single woman i'm 32 tried hard to get a husband can't get one let me do what will hopefully bring one my way forget the seventh commandment and you find out what that commandment is 
I am, this is my circumstance, whatever it may be. God's commandments conflict with my circumstances. It is not convenient to obey God. And so we live our lives based on convenience. And the Lord said unto, unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I, I, says God. And so God puts himself up against Eve. I, my voice was, don't eat. Her voice was, eat. You chose hers. Why? Then I commanded you. She did not even command. She pleaded. I commanded. Curses the ground. For thy sake. Adam's first mistake. He put someone else ahead of God. Listen to me carefully. If you are putting someone else ahead of God, ask for the courage tonight to reverse that process and put God ahead of everyone else, including yourself. Come on, say amen. amen. Adam's second big mistake. Genesis 3 verse 6, we read that again. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, Adam hearkened to Eve's voice. Let's read a little of what the Bible says, how a good husband should behave. Any husbands here tonight? Say amen, husbands. Amen, amen I'm one. Any husbands on this side? No? I didn't hear anything. I promise not to pick on the left side and I've been doing very well, have I not? But you, you still, okay, leave that alone. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, let's read from verse 22. A lot of men love this verse. They love the first part. And they don't, they don't read the whole thing. They love the first part of this verse. Ephesians 5, 22, what does the Bible say? Wives, Submit yourselves unto your Come on, submit yourselves unto whom? Your own husband. You can't have a variety of husbands. This is serious business. Submit yourself unto your own husband. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church. And men read that and say, ah. I have absolute power, absolute control. Anything I say, she must do. No, you are wrong. Don't deport me. You are wrong. <laughs> Let's continue reading. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Finish the verse with me. And he is the savior of the body. Now, the body referring to Christ is the church. In reference to the husband is the wife. Listen to me carefully. The husband is the savior of the body. That body is the wife. The same way Jesus is a savior to the church. The husband is to be a savior to the wife. Why are you quiet as a graveyard? Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> Which means... When Eve came with that fruit to Adam, hmm? God made Adam first, according to the Bible chronology, gave him all the information he needed, which meant he then had to tell Eve, which is an evidence of leadership, not dictatorship. There are too many husbands who think they descended from Idi Amin, <laughs> or Milton Obote, or Hitler, or Pol Pot, if you know about the history of Cambodia. Mm -mm. There's not one Bible verse where Jesus beats his wife. And so the Bible says he's the savior of the body. When Eve came to Adam with that fruit, with the bite marks on it like the Apple logo, Adam should have said, oh, ah, a Sally Wangu. <laughs> pole, pole, pole. What have you done? Ah, Eve, what have you done? Come. I will take you to God. Amen. I'll speak for you. I'll tell him you're sorry. He'll forgive you. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. That's the savior of the body. You don't join the body in sin. You try to deliver the body out of sin. Amen. 
So he said, come with me, Eve, because I told you sin affected the world when Adam sinned, not Eve. So the world was not yet affected. And God would have forgiven Eve. I don't know all the details. All I know is God forgives. He would have forgiven Eve. God would have forgiven Lucifer if he had repented of his rebellion. So Adam, as a savior of the body, should have said, Eve, I'll talk for you. Stand behind me because you're a sinner. <laughs> you can't go look at God. You stand behind me. Let me go talk to God on your behalf. Let me be a savior of the body. But what do we have? Adam said, Eve, he looks at this woman, she is so beautiful. I mean, teeth as white as milk. You know, lips, hair like a waterfall. And nice toes, no shoes, but nice toes. <laughs> God is good <laughs> all the time. And he looks at this woman the way women, you know, they just mesmerize men today. And he just couldn't see himself without her. He lost the trust in God that God could forgive her, forgive her or replace her. If I made one, I can make another one. And so instead of putting God's interest first, he put the woman ahead of God. His second mistake, he was not a savior of the body. My brothers who are husbands contemplating being husbands, your highest duty is to be a savior of the body not to beat your wife because your name is not on her birth certificate you're not her father i'll preach sister <laughs> this is extremely serious i don't know how christian men read the bible and go beat their wives she didn't cook the ogali well, you, you beat the woman. She didn't clean the house, you beat the woman. You know, what? one of the things I've observed in Africa, how hard the life of women is. Jeez. <laughs> they do all the work. Whether they're in the, you know, the, the Maasai Reserve or they're wherever, the women do all the work. They go get the wood a piece of rope around the head and there's a big thing on the back and the poor woman is bending over and the man just walking around doing nothing <laughs> and if she doesn't bring enough wood then she gets beaten <laughs> we are placed as saviors of the body can you say amen yeah. and so let's review Adam's two big mistakes one he put someone ahead of God and that someone was a family member. With all respect for family, and I have one, and I'm the product of one, and I encourage families to be strong in the Lord, never put a family member ahead of God. The Bible is so, you know, the Bible hides nothing. Abraham committed adultery, the Bible tells us. David committed adultery, the Bible tells us. He committed murder, the Bible tells us. The Bible just exposed everything to let us know that the characters who finally overcame, they had problems. In the line of Jesus was a prostitute. What's her name? Rahab. An adulteress. What's her name? Bathsheba. And someone who masqueraded as a prostitute, Tamar. In the line of Jesus. And a Moabitess who practiced a false religion. What was her name? Ruth. So we have these weaknesses, but a weakness is not an excuse for sin, because where sin abounds, finish it for me, grace gone doth much more abound, because grace is the power of God, sin is the power of Satan, you tell me who's more powerful. When Satan wanted to tempt Job, he had to get permission from God. And God told him, you can do that, you cannot do this. And when God restricted him, he could not go beyond that boundary. Always remember that, by the way. Also remember this, if I may digress briefly. When God told Satan, behold, he's in his hand. All that he has is in his hand. How quickly did Job lose everything? In one day. It is only because of the mercies of God that Satan doesn't destroy lives in a day. 
he wants to destroy as quickly as possible so when god said okay Satan, you go ahead destroy all that he has satan destroyed everything he had in a day why the devil knows he has what a short time so he needs to do as much damage as quickly as possible but let's get back to adam's first mistake a family member ahead of God the Bible as I said does not hide the warts and pimples of humanity we step out of the garden chapter 3 verse 24 they're put out right outside the gate we have a murder who killed whom a brother killed a brother because one brother was doing what was right and the other brother did not like it and so we leave the Garden of Eden and go all the way thousands of years to first John chapter 3 verse 11 for this is the message we heard from the beginning that you should love one another not as Cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother and wherefore slew he him why because his works were evil and his brother's works were righteous a brother killed a brother because the one was doing right and the one doing right and raised the one doing evil we leave the gate of Eden we traveled a few hundred years to Genesis 16 to a woman who couldn't wait to have a child impatient and what I'm saying is known to those of you listening to me impatient for a child she told her husband go sleep with that woman and her child is mine the father of the faithful committed adultery at the recommendation of a family member that was Abraham listening to Sarah the Bible says and Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah Genesis 16 from verse 1 to 5 we leave there and we move a few decades to the life of Isaac and his two sons Jacob and Esau Jacob realized he was the second of the two because Esau came out first even though they were twins Esau wanted a birthright he hatched a plan at the instigation of his mother the mother hatched a plan involved him he agreed he was not six years old he was probably 30 and a mother who was a wife and a son got together and deceived a father and committed a crime against a brother now what am I saying about families that God made a mistake when he invented families I am not saying that I am saying that very often the things that God gives us to be blessings to us we use them to curse God God gave us the family to be a blessing. We use the family to disregard God. God gave us appetite that we may eat and live. We abuse it and we overeat. God gave the urge for sex to reproduce and for enjoyment between the man and the wife in a marriage context. We abuse it to be lesbians and homosexuals and prostitutes and whatever else. God gives us something for our blessing. We use it to curse him. It's a tremendous crime against God and the family falls into that category. God created a family that it might be the foundation of a strong society and we use it to disobey him. That's what I'm saying. And someone listening to me knows what I'm saying applies directly to you. But there's always hope when there's a desire to serve God.